Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my channel. Today we paint a post-apocalyptic 1-50 Gundam diorama. I usually use Mecha Black Primer. It thins the same way with Surface Primer. I have a video, I'll put the link on top. We start by using, by painting dark gray-blue. I wanted a bluish gray for the base colors, basically the color of the building, so that it will give a nice contrast with the weathering later. I'm painting at around 20-ish PSI using a 0.4 airbrush. I'm painting mostly on top and then to create like a volume for or a zenithal painting for the buildings. All the airbrush paints here except the primer were thin three parts paint and one part thinning sauce. Roughly. I don't measure. I don't weigh. Um, it's just a rough estimate. You could go as high as five parts paint or four parts paint and one part thinning sauce. The most important thing is you use the thinning sauce or at least at the very least use flow improver. I always advise this or suggest this to people. If, if you don't want or you ran out of Vallejo thinner, you could use water. Water with flow improver works mighty fine. Next step is to use the crackle medium to create textures and cracks. Um, I have a better video on how to use the crackle medium. It's clear. It's, I achieve a better look. This one, I'm not so happy with the effect, but it's fairly good. These days, I don't thin my crackle medium and some other mediums I don't thin anymore. I use a bit of flow improver just to prevent tip drying. I add a couple of drops. Again, no weighing, just a rough estimate. You'll get the feel of it once you mix it. You'll, you'll know the consistency that you need for a 0.4 airbrush. Key to using the crackle medium is to let it dry a bit. You need like a thin layer of film before you paint the other color or the next color on top of it. While painting the top color, you'll notice that the crackle medium starts to crack so you shouldn't paint like a second coat or else you'll be covering the crack effects lastly after painting the top color you have to mist it with water the water will activate the crackle medium further but again i think i painted too little crackle medium here so the cracks are a bit small now we dry brush with silver gray model color silver gray it's a very light gray color. I don't even unload my paints as much as I should because this will be toned down by washes later. This is like the easiest technique. Everyone knows that. It's a matter of bringing out those highlights or bringing out those textures so that we have a really nice texture defect on those concrete stuff. Also, I like painting really light colors, light dry brushing, light, very light highlights so that when we use the washes later it will tone down it will darken you don't want really really dark stuff or well at least for me i don't want it to be really dark so once it's very light and we do the washes you'll get to see the effect and then you'll get to see more details so now we're gluing some tomitech cars you could get this at greattoysonline.com at least locally the colored buildings are actually Tomitech too, and the ruined buildings, the gray ones, are Preza. Pre those are Preza buildings. So once we've glued all the cars and buildings, I also ask my son to glue the buildings, the other buildings, the Preza and other stuff with cheap super glue so that it's really fixed and, and durable because we have to ship this soon. Now we do washes, my fab stuff. It's, it's so fun to do washes. There are so many Vallejo washes, so let's talk about them. So basically, there are three kinds of washes. You have, or depending on the range, you have the Mecha weathering wash, the classic model wash, and the game wash. I'm not using the game wash here. It dries a bit slower, I think, and it's perfect for skin and cloth and stuff like that. So it's since it dries slower, you could blend it a little bit. For But for this purpose, for this project, we're just using Mecha Weathering Black and Dark Gray Model Wash. Notice that I added more thinner to the ink because the ink stains more. It's, it's more opaque and the coverage is stronger. So I added more 
Thinner you could use water, of course. So I added more thinner to the ink so that it won't be too opaque. The model wash is the most subtle here, so it's the perfect first pass of washes. You won't overdo it because it's a bit subtle. It's also the perfect wash for anything that you want to look more realistic. But we're not really aiming for realism here. A bit of realism is good, but these are display pieces for toys, for action figures, and for gunpla. So we're just trying to blend, wet blend everything together so to create an organic looking weathering on all the pieces. The mecha weathering washes are like in between the inks and the classic model wash. They're the opacity and the strength of the stainability of these washes are a bit stronger but not as strong as the inks so they're perfect for me i'm kind of impatient sometimes so i want quick and fast results so just make sure to blend the edges with water so that you won't get too much what do you call that tide marks but they're really good the the effects of the mecha weathering wash is really fast and it's very stainable is stainable a word i don't know Anyways, just build up the washes, um, make sure you dry, you let it dry in between passes. This particular clip, you'll see that the crackle medium is not varnished, which is good for our purpose. It now acts like a chipping medium. You, you'll see that I'm kind of chipping off the building parts, the building walls as I apply washes. So if you don't want to reactivate the cheaping medium, just paint with a varnish, a satin or a matte varnish before you do the washes. Now washes or weathering in general, you could do this for a week or a month depending on the purpose or depending on the project. If these are contest pieces, I would work on this for, for like a month, but these are commission projects and they're just background display pieces for toys and action figures. So we're fairly almost finished with this one. The Mecha Weathering Rust texture is highly recommended. You could, I paint it like dark to lightest, the Mecha Weathering washes and the texture paint. And you create instant effects with them. You could use the other Vallejo washes, but these are the fastest, like I, I get results really fast with this Weathering washes. So I'm basically just using two paints here. One is first I use the rust texture, which is a really dark brown color. It represents old rust and it has a very teeny weeny bit texture, which is pretty good. It's out of scale if you're strict with the scaling, but it looks really nice. There's also a mecha weathering dark rust wash and a light rust wash. I'm using light rust here, which is more orangey the dark rust is redder but i'm kind of like making the weathering faster here so after the rust texture i use the light rust wash the orangey light rust wash basically represents new rust it's like I, i'm thinking of it this way the dark rust texture is old rust and then when it gets wet it kind of bleeds out and the bleeding is the light rust wash so basically weathering with washes is to let each color dry so that you build up transparent colors. So I asked my daughter Sam to help me with the Vallejo tufts. So she added like random tufts all over the pieces thinking of I Am Legend, the movie here. So we're done. Again, you could spend more time with these pieces. You could use mecha weathering effects paints. There are moss and lichen streaking grime rain marks and all that stuff you could also paint like more layers of washes let dry in between coats and depending on what the look you're aiming for but i'm fairly happy with the results here and i'm shipping this today that's it we're done i hope you like the video it's 10 minutes like comment subscribe share and do check my website saludos I am Don, welcome to my channel.